Stan, who will uh, take care of this webinar. So as you could see on the invitation, the, the topic of the webinar is um, water stable isotopes, and this, this will be declined in three parts. So today is a part one of the topic of water stable in isotopes. And today we will go through the offering of ABB, the ABB analyzers uh, for isotopic water applications and, and the different options associated with those instruments. Uh, so the webinar has been prepared by my colleagues, uh, Susan uh, Fortson and Marjolaine Arsenault. Uh, so Marjolaine will, will give the talk. Uh, Marjolaine has a, uh, holds a PhD in physical chemistry from Université de Montréal, and she did some postdocs at uh, Pierre and Marie Curie University in Paris, and also Université de Québec, Laval. And uh, Marjolaine has been working for seven years as an application scientist for FTIR, uh, and for three years now she has been with ABB. Uh, Marjolaine is based in Quebec City, and she's uh, currently working as an application scientist for the LGR ICOS line of uh, gas analyzers, concentration and isotope analyzers. And uh, as I said, the webinar was also prepared by uh, our colleague Susan Fortson. Uh, Susan has a, holds a bachelor's in biological sciences from Auburn University in Alabama. Uh, she has been working with LGR and now ABB uh, for 12 years now. Um, and Susan is based in San Jose, California, in the research and engineering group. And she's working as a product development manager and with a strong expertise in liquid water isotopic analysis. Um, so with this, I will uh, ask um, all of you to, to stay muted. I, I think all of you are already muted, which is good to stay muted. Uh, so I need to inform you that this webinar is being recorded. So it will be made available uh, separately for people who couldn't join. And uh, we will keep some time, uh, some time at the end of the webinar for questions, a question session where both uh, Marjolaine and Susan will be able to, to, to help with the answers. And so with that, I will mute my microphone and hand over the presentation to, to you, Marjolaine. Hi, everyone. Thank you, Frederick. Um, it's a pleasure to be present today to present our product dedicated to water stable isotope. So, um, can you see my screen? I cannot change. Okay, there. Okay, so a little background. We're talking about isotopes. Oh, no, sorry first. This presentation is meant to be read and will be available on website. So for today's small talk, I'll use it as a support. But if you want a copy, you could read it uh, at your own time, um, read at your leisure. So again, uh, application background. So we're talking about uh, water stable isotopes. So you probably all know what an isotope is. But these are not radioactive ones, so they won't decay spontaneously. Uh, in nature, the stable ones are O16 and hydrogen. These are the most abundant. But when we talk about azote, we usually relate to O18, deuterium, and O17. And why are we interested in uh, those isotopes? They are idle tracer in hydrology and in biology. There, are, there is some natural abundance and those compounds are typical of some formation, either in biological process or hydrological process. More, it can be added uh, as a tracer. Um, in the two next presentation, we're gonna talk specifically about hydrology and then biology uh, studies. Today, like uh, Frederick mentioned, we'll go over the ABB offer, the analyzer, and the general options. So, just a general comment on isotopes. Uh, we generally talk about concentration when we talk about gases or component, but in this specific case, we'll talk about uh, relative concentration. So we'll talk about delta value uh, expressed in per mil, and they are uh, relative to the concentration of a standard. So you have here an example 
of the formula. So if we talk about the abundance of O18, we will talk about delta O18, which is against O16. And it's, uh, it's against a standard. In the previous, in the, in our case, we're using a VNS standard mean ocean water. There's lots of standards, but this is the one we are use. It's been uh, used since 1968, so it's quite old and accepted by the international community. At ABB, we do our in-house certified water standard. Uh, we make them in San Jose, and we have here the example of five standards. Um, you can see that they are against Vienna standard main ocean water too. Uh, and there's a different concentration. Why is there? Because the customer may want to work in depleted, normal natural range, or enriched range. Traditionally, this is done by mass spectroscopy. Um, I won't go too much in detail, but these are ionized molecules separated by mass. It's not a simple technique. It's well known by chemists for a long time, but it's quite costly as a large footprint and need especially a trained and dedicated operator. To this, we offer, a, would say, not a competition, but a complementary uh, system, which is bent up, no need for a trainer, uh, can go for high throughput and is uh, long-term stable and low cost. So we'll go over all these uh, shortly in detail. So first, what is ICOS? So LGR stands for the, the ABB is the company. LGR is a formal company who developed the technology and ICOS is the technology itself. Um, it's, if you look at the right side of your screen, it's actually an uh, absorption technique. So we do have a cavity filled with a gas, so it's always a measure in a gas phase. There's a laser, a source coming in, and it bounces over mirrors. Those mirrors are highly reflective, so it creates a long pathway, kilometers. Actually, it's an average 20 to 30 kilometers. Um, the pressure is lowered and the temperature fixed. So we have a reading of narrow bands of vibrational rotational absorption. Um, so it prevents the so a long pathway. Uh, it measured a complete absorption peak. It's not a mat, so we won't see a matrix effect because we see really the narrow associated band. It's off axis, as you can see in the design, so there is no need for perfect alignment. It gives it a certain roughness. Um, we have a compensation for the cell temperature, the pressure, and the laser intensity, so it's really stable against any fluctuation in the system. Uh, the mirrors can be cleaned independently, so this cavity can be open the mirror clean and the mirror put back. Since there are no need for a special alignment, it's possible. Um, so it means it's field serviceable, which is a great, great uh, um, point for us. Um, it can work either on UV or mid IR. In this specific case, we're going to be looking at O18, O16. Uh, and O17, as well as deuterium and hydrogen, and those will all be covered by two lasers. Um, it's possible to have more than one laser, as I, uh, it's not illustrated there, but you can have more than one laser and still one detector. So it, it gives simultaneously uh, readings. Specifically for the water-stable isotope analyzer, we have six flavor. Flavor can be divided in actually three categories. The first one will be the liquid water, water isotope analyzer, LWAA. Um, 
it's for, as I say, measurement of liquid sample, so usually microliters, that will be vaporized. So we're still reading the vapor phase, the gas phase, but we're using a small sample that is vaporized in the cavity. Um, with a single laser, we can measure deuterium and O18. If we add a second laser, then it's uh, the, the T is for triple, for three readings. We can add O17. Uh, why don't we offer one single uh, instrument with already the two lasers? It's because it's way much more expensive and it's not always needed. O17 is not really abundant naturally and it's not always needed by uh, our users. It can come in benched up or ultra powered part. I'll show pictures later. The second option is water vapor isotope analyzer, WVIA. In this case, instead of having a cell fill by a, a liquid vaporized, it's a continuous flow. So it's just a pump that will flow the the gas in continuously. Um, this is more like our standard ICOS system for other gases. Uh, in this case, because uh, you are measuring from a gas, you have also the concentration of water in this gas that you can measure. And you have again two options, one laser for deuterium and O18 or two lasers for uh, deuterium O18 and O17. And finally, there's the Cadillac of the system, the isotope water analyzer. In this case, you have dual functionality system. It combines the two plumbing. So instead of having only the vaporized liquid or the continuous flow, you have two sets of plumbing going in a cell. It cannot do both at the same time, of course, but it can switch from one to the other. The outside is exactly uh, the same. Unfortunately, I don't have a picture of the inside. It's an uh, uh, industrial secret, but um, it's actually quite uh, delicate and fancy. So again, you have two options, um, deuterium and O18 with one laser, or the TIWA with two lasers, and the option of O17. So when you want a bio system, actually, you have three options, three more options. It can be a ultra portable. And here you have a picture of it on the side. It's a yellow box, portable one. Uh, for this one, the injection of liquid need to be done manually. So you have a syringe and you push, the user would push the sample in. Um, it's less precise than our other system and it's not uh, thermally controlled, but it can, uh, it has a great advantage to be portable. Uh, then there are the rack mount series, the GLA331, which is bench up. Unfortunately, I don't have a picture of it uh, available, but it's not temperature controlled. Usually our users would prefer the benched up one. And here are two pictures. So you see with the computer, the size of it. Um, it's thermally controlled. You can have a uh, liquid vapor or both. Um, as for liquid, it comes with an auto loader. Uh, there's an image here of the auto loader. Um, and there's an internal pump. There's no need for a pump for any of the instruments on my side. There's no need for external pump. Um, it can also be injected manually, but uh, users usually prefer auto loader. And then uh, you have the dual one. So on the left, you have you see it's the same size, the same box, but there you have the auto loader and something else on top. This other device is sold with the vapor version of the instrument. It's a vapor, water vapor isotope standard source. We call it the WIZ. So the WIZ is actually a system that will, an accessory that will provide a flow of water vapor 
of a noun concentration. So you can see there's a bottle there. You will fill it with a noun concentration of isotope, well, uh, liquid version, and it will create a steady flow. Because it's really important to remember that standards are critical to reading of uh, isotopes. Um, especially for liquid water analyzer, uh, uh, isotope analyzer, we do have a special software and it comes with the auto loader. Um, it's possible to identify initially uh, your sample and your standards. Uh, already uh, set the concentration, the expected concentration of the standard and set if the, the um, sample are standard full natural range or enrich. Pardon. <coughs> um, <coughs> I'm sorry. So once the measurement uh, configuration is completed, the system is fully autonomous. And I need to emphasize on the fact that there's no need for consumable gases um, and carrier gases. Once uh, uh, it's uh, loaded, there are many options. So this system can do 800 injection per day. It doesn't mean 800 sample per day. Um, the distinction is more clear here. So in the user manual, we suggest many uh, path. This is the most standard one. So you would have three standards, one, two, three, and 12. In this example, you have 12 samples. For each standard and sample, there would be six injection. Why six? Because every two first will be rejected. They will be rejected based on the fact that we don't want a memory effect. This is how we found it out. The, this is the best methodology to remove the memory effect from one sample to the other. Um, and then the average will be done on the fourth last measurement. But there might be differences. So on the left, you have the high throughput one. So again, you put your standard, you have sample and then standard again, six injection H. But someone may want a high precision over a high throughput. And then in this case, we suggest again to have standard every four or five sample, but then to repeat the same sample 10 times. So it would be 60 injection, 20 rejected, and 40 used for the average. There's also specific cases where you have full natural range or enriched range. There the memory effect has much more uh, chance to be, uh, to be affecting. So in these cases, we recommend to inject 10 or up to 12 injections and to repeat the sample uh, more than once and to reject up to six injection. So again, the, um, the average will be done on four readings uh, per sequence, if you want, uh, in, even if it's injected 10 times. So it's really critical to understand what the user wants, what the uh, uh, range is using, uh, is it uh, a need for high throughput, or screening, for example, or a really precise measurement? It will change the number of sample per day. So even if it's 800 injection, doesn't mean it's 800 uh, sample. One great feature, again, of our liquid system is the post analysis uh, software. Um, all the calculation will be done automatically. So this, the known and unknown and entry and calculated and the operator don't have to perform any, uh, any calculation. So there's also the um, really important feature that will uh, produce flags, whatever there is uh, syringe instability, a leak of a septum, temperature fluctuation, and or uh, contaminant and so on. 
So this is a key feature of our system. However, I won't go into full detail. This is, there's a lot of graphs, there are options, uh, you can export, uh, you can customize. Although all this, it would have taken too long today and it would be too heavy as a presentation. But we'll talk about it uh, with specific example in the coming presentation on hydrology and biology uh, studies. So if we summarize all the advantages of this absorption ICOS readings. First, it's pre-calibrated um, at, uh, at the factory and it's highly sensitive. We're using a laser diode and it's quite stable. It's off axis, it's rug. Uh, it's robust also again against cross interference because we're reading a really narrow band and fully full spectrum. So it can resist matrix, matrix effect. So we'll see when we talk about hydrology, which is really, or even biology, it's really important because there might be way much more than only water and salt in these um, sample. Um, it's highly cost effective because there is no consumable uh, and there's a two year warranty which come with all our analyzer. We're so confident in our technology actually. Um, it's possible to perform field studies with the portable equipment. I must say though the portable equipment is not thermally controlled. Uh, it can go over a wide range from zero to 45 degree, but it might be more seen as a screening instrument where you would go in the field screen and then bring back the most uh, important uh, sample you want to really analyze in the lab. Uh, it's field serve, uh, the field serverability enables on-site maintenance. We already talked about it. So you do have the option to open the cavity if it was filled by water, for example, by accident so uh, or, or any dirt. So you would open it, clean and put it back. Uh, otherwise, there is no real maintenance to do it. It's off axis. There is no moving part. There's no alignment to readjust. So there's no factory repair and really consuming actually factory repair, time consuming factory repair needed. Uh, as we mentioned before, it enable 800 injection per day. Uh, again, this will depend on whatever of the customer wants, but in an average, with the normal standard procedure, it would go up to 80 samples, which is significantly more than uh, our competing product. And of course, significantly more than mass spectroscopy. Um, the spectral combination identification is a model for post-processing that we're going to cover in the next presentation is this a key feature um, because it enables uh, spectroscopic detection of contaminant. And we have great examples of this one. Uh, it, again, I mentioned it before, but no need to compress gas for high performance. Some customer will want to use it, but it's not needed. Uh, wide operation, uh, operating temperature range. Uh, again, it, it'll apply more when you go outside the lab with the portable, but it's uh, apply also to the bench top uh, which are usually in control uh, temperature labs. Uh, there's an ability to accurate measure extremely enriched sample, which is really important because the thing is we measure not only the absorption, but the ring down the decay of the spectra and the absorption and we need a correction for the absorption. So we can go up to really high concentration. This is specific to ICOS. Uh, it is really important in, in the cases when uh, isotope I use, use as tra tracers. For example, I, uh, one that come uh, on top of my mind is when you feed an animal with deuterium water and then you follow uh, and the urine and so on, you want to enrich the liquid as, as much as possible. Um, then it's a proven methodology to provide re reliable result, uh, eliminating the memory effects. So the methodology we, 
we talked about re by rejecting few injections provide a great result and we have publication to support this. And again, there's a, a robustness, again, interference and matrix effect because we're scanning the whole wavelength, not just collecting the ring down as some other uh, technology does. Uh, just another word on mass spectroscopy. Again, they might not be seen as competitor, but our technology could be combined and, and be a in addition to a lab which is already equipped with mass spectroscopy because an injection takes about us uh, uh, 90 seconds uh, while uh, in case of an in, uh, reading uh, with mass spectroscopy we talk about minutes so we can you see the icos as a screening although we know by now that it's not the gold standard but really used commonly used as a standard and it can in the case of mass spectroscopy and read only one measure at a time so otin and deuterium o18 and deuterium cannot be read at the same time which is the case in the i cost so again it's valuable for us and it's a gain in time um, so there's consumable for the mass spectro mass spectroscopy technique and there's also a needed of a dedicated operator uh, while for the the liquid analyzer for example it can be configured and run by itself for hours We have some uh, scientific uh, paper featuring ABB solution. So uh, they would be available if you want them, just ask. Um, these are not, this is not a limited uh, a list limited to what have been published. Uh, we are uh, quite proud of our products and it's been used uh, worldwide. Finally, here are the three address you can reach us. Um, uh, there's uh, Frederick Despang, who talked initially, who is uh, sales, uh, responsible for sales for uh, ENR. Uh, there is myself, Marceline Arsenault, application part, and Susan Fortson at the um, uh, R&D department. So uh, you also have the general mail ICOS application. So I hope you enjoyed this part. And we'll have uh, even more interesting two other webinars on really application and what do users uh, generally do with our system. Thank you. Thank you very much, Marjolaine, for the presentation. Uh, really nice presentation. Uh, we, we will open now uh, a question and answer session. Uh, just before we go into this session, a few points. So uh, as Marjolaine mentioned, uh, the, the presentation will be made available shortly on the ABB ASN website for those of you who have access to it. Uh, and the recording of the webinar we will also, also be available on the ABBSN website. Uh, for people who do not have access to ABBSN website and require a copy of the presentation, they can send an email uh, to the people, to, to one of the addresses listed here. Uh, you, uh, you can send it. By the way, there is a typo, Marjolaine, in my... Uh, I see now on my email address there is 2D in my first name. There is one, one, what? Well, okay. Uh, so you can you can send us your your, your request, um, and and we will start with a with a question session. Just for your information, Marjolaine, while you were talking, uh, so some people already started with some questions, and Susan has been helping. So I'll try to very briefly summarize the questions we we got. Uh, Paolo Favaro was asking us about uh, use of an auto sampler with our portable isotopic uh, liquid water analyzer. So yes, uh, we, we can use the current uh, standard auto sampler, which, uh, which holds 162 vials. This can be interfaced with our portable instrument. Uh, and on top of that, we're working on the development of, of a new portable auto loader, a more compact auto loader, and we will let uh, our colleagues and partners and customers know when this one becomes available. Um, 
There was also a question about the thermal stabilization of the benchtop instruments, isotopic water instruments, and Susan explained that they are thermally stabilized at 45 degrees Celsius to counter uh, pot potential drifts in the isotopic measurements due to temperature fluctuations. Um, with that, uh, so I will again open the questions to um, to our other people. Uh, if, if you have some other questions, uh, please feel free to, to ask them now and to, you can unmute your phone and, and let us know your questions. Okay, there's no question. I just saw also that Steve was asking about the standards, um, <clears throat> the different sets of standards that are provided by ABB. Um, standard 1E to 5E, yes, are the ones that we pre we provide by default uh, together with the instruments and they are standard range, uh, as Susan has explained. And, and if needed, we can sell uh, standards for enriched water, uh, enriched applications. Uh, they are also available. We can supply them if needed. Are there, is there any other question, either through the meeting chat or live question? Hi, hi. Hello. Yes, hello. Hello. Yeah, Vaisak here from India. Good morning. Yeah, Vaisak. Yes. Yeah, how are you? Good afternoon. <laughs> yeah, good afternoon, Vizak. Yeah. So I have a number of questions, actually, I was waiting for. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, the, the first question, uh, I re I, I've been using this Algier analyzer for the past seven, seven years, more than that. So I know each and every uh, out uh, the, the thing that I usually face with the thing is the injected volume. Most of the time, when a customer keeps the instrument in his AC room or anywhere, the injector block, I, I, I think that the injector block, there is a temperature change is there and the injector volume is getting affected. That is the one, first uh, problem that I face. And also the thing is in our in, in our condition, we have a high humid condition. So when we uh, use uh, the dry rate, I don't know whether the dry rate is completely uh, absorbing the moisture. So that also will affect the next injected volume, right? So I'm not able to get the precision continuously and the drift is uh, coming higher. So throughout the sample, the drift is uh, different. If you keep a sample at uh, the same sample in position one and in the last position, uh, both the samples will get different value. We will show a different value. So any solution, any any idea, what can be the reason? Okay, I don't know if Susan, maybe, I, I, I'm not sure I understood your, your, your first point. You said that you, you face fluctuations a, of the vol, vo, volume. So, so. Injected volume always it's fluctuate. I am not able to get, I will, I'll get, but uh, not often I won't get the same injected volume. With the new, with the new, uh, the Teflon, uh, is there Teflon with the new one? It's uh, very difficult to get. The older one was better. In this case, <clears throat> excuse me. What oh. I'm going to suggest is yeah. if you could send us data to the uh, support oh. email address. Uh, okay. Whenever there's an issue, um, oh. what we would like is for you to run the diagnostic. So you would use uh, the standards 1E through 4E. There's a uh, you could load the the configuration run uh, in there and send us the data. This is for liquid water. If there's water vapor, we'll we'll have a different method. But if you could send us yeah. uh, water data with um, our standards, we're able to identify and troubleshoot because uh, there's a variety of factors it could be. I'm hearing something about injected volume. Um, there are injected volume corrections we could do, or you mentioned dry right. Um, the dry yeah, right. Yeah. Uh, I have, uh, uh, the thing is that injector block temperature, uh, the external temperature affect that injector block temperature, right? If you keep so you it in a zero inject room, uh, if you keep it the injector block in the auto injector in an AC room, that injector block temperature, whether the, the external temperature affect the temperature, I think it is controlled somewhere around 70 to 80 degree, right? Uh, yes. Yeah, and it is open. 
we okay. just keep on cover so whether the outside temperature affects that injector mode of temperature the the temperature should not in, uh, affect the temperature of the injector block the injector block should be able to hold temperature so we could investigate possibly a malfunction with the wiring um i yeah i would recommend sending us data so that we can uh really look and investigate we're always happy to look at the data there's um a handful of us at uh the san jose site and we work together to try to troubleshoot as fast as possible okay because i have sent this uh, that data also before before also i have sent the data i always get that in every instrument i i install some five six instruments all the instrument the same every customer will face the same issue the drift is not uh, actually the same it it uh, the, from the first sample to the last sample if you see if you keep the same sample it will go so drifting and the new software if you apply the new software then it's better now the old software it was drifting so if you go with high precision mode if you keep the sample sample one in first position and I, in the last position both will show a different value that, that was also happening so i when i cross checked most of the sample it is happening like that it was happening like that so the new instrument which came uh, one one or which year one year before the same same issue with that instrument also then the, the instrument i installed 7 years before both have the same uh it it behaves like that both instrument so is is there a way to change the injector block setup i do, i i don't know i saw the picaro injector block i think that's much let me I make can like i make that. a yeah can i make yeah, a yeah. comment yeah yeah yes, I, yes. hi doug um uh, hi so, how are you yeah good to, good to talk to you <laughs> yeah, yeah after long so yeah. so there's a couple of things um yeah. the injector block temperature is not it's not critical that it stays at the same value all the time the design of the, in, the the injector block is to accelerate the evaporation of the liquid into the vapor phase and then it transforms transfers over to the uh, measurement cell so whether it's 80 degrees c or 82 degrees c it, it's not that critical so ambient temperature as long as the heater as long as the heater is adequately you know heating the block you should be okay so the ambient temperature, in short, the ambient temperature shouldn't really affect the heater block, provided that it's working. If it's not working, that's another problem. So let's verify that it's hot, and then, and that's the the first issue. The second issue that you mentioned was about um, drift of the first sample with regards to the last sample of the day. Let's say it's really important to incorporate the uh, the correction, the standards correction in the post analysis of the data. It's not a, it's not pr properly it's, it's not proper to just look at the data recorded in the beginning of the day and compare it to the next day without any kind of corrections in between. Th that's the purpose of having these routine standards injected into the instrument, and that that's that's critical because that's 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 priced into the whole package. And so what you want to do is you want to look at the user manual and go over the procedures that are described there regarding the analysis of the unknowns using the value of the known standards. And so the post analysis software describes the spline fit and the data analysis routines that are used to basically take out the effects that you're talking about. And, um, and that, that's really critical. So we can help you do that, like, you, like Susan mentioned, if you wanna send us some raw data and the standards along with the unknowns, we can help you analyze the data and uncover uh, how to do this. And then the third issue regarding the um, the dry right. So yeah, the dry right will get consumed in humid environments more quickly. But as long as the dry right maintains its blue color, um, at least at some point in the dryer package in that cartridge, as long as it's blue in the top part, then it should be operating properly. Once it transfers from blue to pink, then it needs to be either replaced or or baked out and replaced and, and reused. So I hope that helps. Yeah, um, and one more thing, uh, changing the yeah. dry rate to a compressed air cylinder, will that be, uh, will, we, will we get more good precise data? If I change uh, the dry rate to a cylinder, or dry cylinder, dry air cylinder? Well, 
Yeah, to be clear, if the dry right's working properly, if it's fresh dry right or if it's not old dry right, then then it, it's then the use of compressed gas won't help. But it it won't hurt either. So I, I don't want to give the impression that we have to use compressed gas. That that's that's not the case. But if if there's an issue with regular use of dry right in a humid environment and it's it's you know basically too much of a hassle or somehow nobody likes the dry right, then if it's more convenient to use the compressed gas, then yes, by all means, do so. Okay. Okay, we, we, um, I noted we also had a question from David who was asking about uh, the IWA model. Uh, so as Marjolaine mentioned, we have different options, different instruments, and, and what we call the IWA, which is what she called the Cadillac of, of our instruments, is the one that can analyze both vapor and liquid sample samples. Uh, and so I think the question from David was to know if we could do it in the same batch or run. So basically when you, when you want to, to analyze from vapor to, to, to liquid, you have, you have to, uh, to, to use a toggle on the instrument and that can be pretty fast. Now, what I, I don't know, Susan, would you recommend that we run separate batches of first vapor samples and then liquid samples or, or is it possible to interleave within the same run liquid and, uh, and, and vapor samples? Uh, because I think this is a question. Well, there, there are two individual instruments built into one package. So they've got um, one analyzer will have two different plumbing configurations. So if you want to run your liquid injections, you would use that with compared uh, compatible with the auto injector, set your run up. But then once that run is done, if you have vapor samples, you would have to get out of the liquid water code and the software has a button that lets you uh, interchange between the two types of analyzers. So then you would choose the water vapor uh, button, which would switch to um, a different uh, software configuration, very similar to what the majority of our other analyzers look like, and you would run your vapor. Um, but you can't do both at the exact same time. Okay, thank you, Susan. You're welcome. Are there any other questions? Uh, hello, can you hear me? Hello, Paolo, yes. Hi, uh, it's Paolo from from Netherlands. Uh, I just have, a, 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 I'm curious from in one point. Uh, what I remember uh, that it's from the, from the injection block, the heated injection block to the analyzer, we have a transfer line that is basically one uh, Teflon tube. Uh, I believe for, for most of the water uh, isotopes are the same. Uh, my question was, is uh, can, cannot be some, some in influence of the external temperature to this uh, transfer line that there is no, uh, it's not a heated transfer line, but just a simple tube. Is it is that the some uh, influence of the, the external temperature on this transfer line? This was tested extensively uh, several years ago, and it, <clears throat> it was shown that it did not have an impact on performance at all. In fact, the length of the tubing does not seem to matter. It could be a shorter tubing versus longer tubing. The reason mm -hmm. we chose the five foot length is because it conveniently sits uh, you could put the uh, auto injector on either side of the analyzer, but uh, no, the, the temperature of the tubing did not seem to affect performance at all. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Any, any other question for our colleague? For customers, there for customers that are concerned about the length of the tubing, you know, please remind them that all of the vapor is transferred from the injector block to the to the heated cell uh, under vacuum, and so complete transfer is is done, and the measurements are actually performed in the measurement cell, which is thermally controlled. So it it may be tempting to point a finger at the transfer line and suggest that there's issues with that, but if, if they think about how the measure uh, the entire process of the measurement, um, you know, the quantity of volume in the transfer line is negligible. 
and as well as it's made of Teflon also. So there's no real memory effect and it's all water vapor at low pressure. So it's, it's really not a concern. And as Susan mentioned, I mean, this has been done as tested as you would imagine for, you know, uh, you know man years. I mean, it, we looked at all different types of transfer line and materials, heating versus non-heating. And it was considerably better to use just the transfer line that's made out of Teflon in unheated. Heating, it didn't help. In fact, in some cases, it, it, it actually hurt, but it was, it's kind of odd, but it, that's what happened. So, and the performance, of course, speaks for itself, right? So if anybody still has a doubt after that explanation, simply refer them to our specs and to a, a third-party review of all of our analyzers, in, you know, and then it just basically works. Thank you, Doug, for the precision. Uh, and, and and as you mentioned, we have a and and Marjolaine showed an extract of some of the articles uh, featuring our instrument. There are many more than the one we listed, but for people who are interested, we'll be happy if you send us an email to share uh, copies which are available of of third party reviewed scientific papers featuring the the ABBLG or isotopic water instruments in different conditions. There has been a quite a number of publications and. Pretty much every month, I see a new paper coming out with featuring one of our isotopic water instruments. So this is this is great, and this is pretty good technical resources also for users who want to implement for the first time our instruments. So feel free to let us know if you want some copies of those instruments for people who have access to the corporate ABB network. Uh, those instruments, uh, those papers are already featured in the sales package uh, ER5. And for people who don't, uh, don't have access to the ABB corporate website, just let, let uh, drop me an email or drop an email to Marjolaine or Susan and we'll be happy to share the papers with you. And um, if there is no other question, I would uh, I would again uh, mention that uh, today was the first part of a three uh, of, of a series of three webinars on the ABB LGR isotopic water instruments. So today, uh, Marshall then explained the principle, basic principles of the instrument and the, and the high level features of the instruments and the subsequent webinars will be announced shortly. Uh, one of them will focus on hydrology applications and the other one, the last one will focus on biological and biomedical applications. So this would be occasions for, for those who will join to see actual live data collected with their instrument in, in real operations. So again, uh, if if anyone has a question, uh, please let us know now before we close this this webinar. Um, this is Susan. I just wanted to clarify uh, one more thing: is that with the liquid water analyzers, the auto injector is still considered an accessory, so it does not come standard. The majority of our customers choose to purchase the auto injector but it is possible to just order the analyzer by itself uh, with a manual injection port where they would have to take a syringe and by hand inject. Uh, so it does not come complete as a package. Okay, thank you, Susan, for the precision. So um, with that, I will, I will again thank, uh, thank uh, my colleagues uh, Marjolaine and Suzanne and also Doug who, who for, for stepping in in discussion. Thanks, thanks. And of course, thank you to everyone who joined the webinar. Uh, thank you also for the people who, who sent us questions. We're always quite open to that and it's always uh, always interesting for everyone to hear about your questions and, and questioning you may have. Um, I will stop the recording now and I will send uh, in the next few days, you will receive invitation for the second webinar uh, of the series. And with that, I thank you all and wish you uh, a good day or a good night or, or a good evening. Thank you.